nothing of life. So, this is night, and it's on reflection when I look back. She realized that I was quite a terror. I was in trouble with the police at the age of 14, was put on probation. And the way in which I began to live my life was such that I got in trouble with the police again. I got sent to Portsmouth. But the centre of Portsmouth, and when I was 18 in Portsmouth, I found that the young people there, of my own age, were very similar. They were living for today, not caring for tomorrow, living to have a good time in this world, caring about no man, no God, no nothing. And I was determined, when I should leave Boston, to come back to Aylesbury, to live life to the full. I was determined that I should not be captured by the police again, but rather my deeds of crime would be hidden in such a way that I'd never be found out, that I would have a business established from stealing, thieving, robbery, and vagabonding in all kinds of wicked ways, and I would have a good time. And I began to start my life. I began to sell marijuana to young children at school. Began to seek to steal garage equipment, television sets, and I intended to have a television business on stolen goods. I was a thorough road and a villain. Permissive sex was the norm. The preachers today do not preach the right things. These ways are wrong. Sexual activity outside of marriage is wrong. It does you no good. Not right. We are living on another promiscuous society. But we need faithful preachers to tell us the things which are right for us. But that was my life. I was a boastful character. I didn't care about anyone. In fact, I was so full of myself that it didn't seem to bother me when my mother was ill. Had cancer of the breast. I was so taken up with myself. I did not realize there were other people in this world besides myself. Therefore, it is evident to you that I was a wicked, sinful youth. But the gospel, friends, which I bring to you tonight is full of glory and full of truth, full of grace, because the Lord Jesus Christ came into the world to save such as I was. Sinners! He did not come into the world to save the righteous. He did not come into the world to save those that do not need a saviour. Therefore, if you're righteous, and if you're not a sinner, the Lord Jesus Christ is not for you. But he came into the world to save sinners. Save them. To save them from themselves. To save them from their life which will take them to hell. And to deliver them and take them to heaven. And all the promises of the gospel are to save sinners. Well, now that was my life. And I was such a sinner, you see. And many of my friends tonight, which I beg to come, have not turned up. There are many who have said to me that they would come. But it is the Lord's doing. He knows what he's doing. Everything is ordered of God. Even your steps in coming here today is ordered of God. You friends are not here by chance. The Lord God hath guided you here. Though he has been secondary causes, you are here not by chance. To hear of the great things which the Lord Jesus Christ 
dust of sins. Maybe, perhaps, peradventure it may be that the Lord Jesus Christ will stretch his hand out to such as you and save you by his grace and give you life, the life which he's given me. Well, now, coming back to the story. The events then of my life were such that at the age of 18, coming out of course for 19 years old, I was determined to have a good time in this world. It was no unordinary thing for me to go out on a Saturday night to purchase a bottle of whiskey with my friends and drink a half bottle and knock myself out deliberately for drunkenness sake. And this was the life in which I lived, a righteous living, just to live for the day. When I was 20, I had a reasonable job. I was working for a company which services television sets, radio records. And I had a company car, and I was living at home, and I had money, I had drugs, I had every opportunity that any young person could have in this world. Yet money, drugs, sex, exploits in violence and crookedness and wickedness could not satisfy my soul. The more I exercised my desire and craving to do these things, the greater was the appetite. In other words, sin could not satisfy me. The more I got involved, the more I wanted. When I was 20 years old on the 16th of January 1970, that was the last time I took LSD. LSD is a drug, a hallucinatory drug which can destroy the mind and cause terrible things. And I warn any young people here today that no friends that take drugs. You stay there. Have nothing to do with these things. They're no good. I give this drug to three other friends that night. One of them is a registered drug addict today. My other friends have gone through broken marriages. In fact, many of my friends that I were involved in <coughs> during that time have gone through broken homes. They are jobless. They have troubles and troubles without number. The Lord Jesus saved me from a life of certain further imprisonment. And the Lord Jesus delivered me from a wicked cause to live in. And on the 16th of January 1970, the last time I took LSD, I had a very bad experience, which in the drug world is called the horrors. And the horrors is a very nasty effect which people experience on drugs, and it drives them, as it were, into torments. My brother is here tonight. On that evening, my brother didn't understand what was happening when I went to him. And he said he was going to wind me up. And he did. But it drove him to find help. And there was no one I could go to. So my friend and I made my way down to Mount Street, which is in Aylesford, to Mrs. Knight's. I wanted to get a little home get some, some military transport to get me home so that this drug and this torment would go from me. But when I was there, I found perhaps I should go into the house and explain what was happening. So I went into the house and said to them, look, I'm going out and I'm lying on the Can you help me? Or oh, I didn't, I didn't quite want to say that. But they were clear. They saw there was something up. There was nothing they could do. And I reasoned within myself, they can't help, doctors can't help, there is no one to help me in this condition. 